And ahoy everybody, what's up? I hope you're all having a lovely day. I am Aquilius Epic, and today, I am actually going to review something again, for the first time in quite a while. Now, believe it or not, I actually have a brain that is big enough to actually read something. And considering I want to pick up my reading game a lot, after the last three years of neglecting to read any actual books or literature, I've been staying on the lookout for any good books to read. This wish to reincorporate reading into my everyday life also coincided with my increasing use of Reddit. And, as things should be, one day, by sheer coincidence and luck, I found a post on a German subreddit by an author specifically looking for German readers to find out if his sense of writing coincided with the German more cynical sense of humour. And because I had nothing better to do, and quite frankly I need some content for, my channel as well, especially after this slight rebranding I'm going through the minutes. I wrote a friendly message and said, hey, I mean, I could read it, if you want me to. And the author was nice enough to provide me with the book to read it through and produce this review. Apart from supplying the copy of the book, this review is otherwise not paid or endorsed. This is my honest opinion and review of stories I wrote while being suicidal by Paul Deverall. I really hope I pronounced that correctly. It's a French name, and my French skill is really, really not that good. It's probably something I'd end up killing myself over. You're going to France and you mispronounce something all the time, and then, yeah. Nah, I wouldn't survive that for long, really. Now, based on the title alone, it is fairly obvious that I should also say that this book features a lot of very heavy subject matter. And first, I will have to say straight off the bat, it's maybe not a read for everybody. However, I would still recommend to read the book, especially if you're going through a hard time of your life yourself, or are also able to view things through a more cynical lens, as I also stated in the intro. That is an uh, ongoing theme in the book. It has a very cynical way of presenting itself. I personally like that kind of style. It is very relatable, and I think a little bit of cynicism and sarcasm can help you get through a lot of troubles, whatever you may be facing with. Obviously all in its appropriate dosage. The book itself, which was first published in 2020, covers 11 short stories over a total of 129 pages. These stories can vary in length from just a few pages, to stories that can range over 20 pages long. The stories themselves also cover a spectrum of central themes, a few of which I could note as, for example, that one should question oneself before acting, in a manner that you should tell yourself what exactly you're doing as if you were five, or in the case of the story, seven. Another core theme are character studies, which are fairly hard to do in real life, and unfortunately in the case of many suicidal people, who often tend to be quite reclusive in the later stages, often happen way too late. However, this book provides a few examples of those kind of characters, and could maybe help you to understand similar situations in your own surroundings. An outlier in the themes is mentioned in the short story I Censor, and that also asks the question which role technology should play in the modern, politically correct age. And similar as to the second point I said before, another theme of this book is giving voices to inside voices, voices that you cannot hear, like me blabbing into the microphone for all eternity. Voices are inside you, voices of your soul or something, equivalent whatever you want to believe in. And according to a statement by the author, it seems like that was one of the main goals all along, so bear that in mind while reading the book. One thing that is to be said about the writing style is that these stories can very often switch from a more mundane, everyday setting to a very, very dark and obviously very downputting view of the characters extremely quickly. And in that note, every story has something slightly different to offer as well, as every story has a different character and the stories are completely unrelated to each other. A lot of the stories also make references or slight jabs at current trends in society or current affairs as a whole. So even if you want a sense of escapism, there'll always be some tie to the real world. The books and the stories themselves are written in a very realistic manner, so they do not seem 
that unbelievable. I mean, sure, there's a sci-fi story, and the second story in the book itself is particularly, particularly very, very dark and very heavy. But even that is written in a way where it doesn't seem all that unplausible. As I've been saying over and over again, this book has a lot of very mature themes. So, no, I would definitely not recommend the little girl in the first story to pick up this book for herself, even though she may seem very smart. But really, this book is not a book aimed at seven-year-olds. One of the main questions the author wanted to have answered when handing out these review copies was what effect humour in this book had on the readers. Most of the characters were written to be quite cynical in nature, and cynicism itself is a fairly common trope in humour, specifically in Germany and in Britain. Having an overly negative outlook on things obviously can be fairly depressing. <laughs> However, if you're able to make fun of it, I think you have won as well on the inside. So, cynical humour in the right dosage is quite appealing for me personally, and I think adding a little bit of cynicism to your life definitely is not a bad idea. You just have to bear in mind that a lot of the characters written are fairly twisted in nature. They have been through a lot of stuff that you would really not wish upon people, and with that in mind, so sort to of consider that most of these characters ha got a screw loose somewhere. Oh, I'm just generally in a really, really bad position. But if you are the first to say that you're fucked, then I mean, I do not see a reason why. I mean, I'm pretty cynical when it comes to my YouTube career, but I'm one to laugh about it. And hey, who knows? Maybe one day it'll be somewhere. Until then, I just gotta keep working, I guess. Does that count as optimism? I mean, it'd be cynical for me to say that I'll not be the next PewDiePie, sure. I don't, I don't know. Why, why am I going on this tangent again? Also, a very funny part of the book were the added caricatures that you can see in the book as well. Last thing I want to say about this book is that the author is not a native speaker of English. However, even in English, the writing style is very enticing and quite gripping, especially in the format of the short story. Paul Devereaux has managed to write a story that compels you to keep reading. And that is fairly, fairly high praise. And with that, I would like to conclude my review of the book Stories I Wrote While Being Suicidal by Paul Devereaux. Generally, this is a book that, although it may be a bit heavy, and it may seem on the outlook that it may put you down and may be demotivating, turns out to be a generally nice read, with a writing style which is clean and definitely keeps you engaged. I will include an Amazon link in the description below, for which you could check out the book yourself, and with the book currently being on offer, it is a pretty fair deal for the amount of book you get for it as well. The author is an independent, so they have no connection to major publishing houses or anything to support them with their publications, so any support they could get along the way is obviously greatly appreciated by them as well, as far as I'm told. I will also reiterate again that this review was not paid for, and I literally did this to kill off some time and to produce some content. So with that, I hope you like this, and I hope you go check out the book as well. And after that, you can come back to the channel and check out more epic content on the channel as well, which I will put in the end cards, which you can probably see right about now-ish, maybe. So yes. Yeah, there they are. They're probably flurring around the screen somewhere right now. Anyway, thank you all so much for checking out the video. Definitely make sure to like this video, share it if you want other people to have a look at this book as well. And that you stay epic until then, because I will obviously then be able to see ya.